Good morning and a very warm welcome to our online Sunday service here at St Anne's Egbeth. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ian Greenwood. I'm the vicar of our church, St Anne's Egbeth, and it's my huge privilege to lead this amazing church. If it's your first time with us here and it's your first time visiting uh, this uh, site, this YouTube channel or this Facebook page or whatever it is that you're seeing this video through, I do encourage you to go move directly to our website, www.stannesegbeth.com. On there, you'll be able to find out just who we are as a church, uh, all the things that we're doing and we're involved with. You'll also be able to listen to some of our sermons for the last couple of years that have been uploaded to get a flavour of who we are. And you'll also be able to see about house groups and other ways in which you can develop your own personal journey of faith and your own discipleship. Also, I do encourage you to move to the YouTube channel that we have, again, St. Anne's Egworth. And if you go there, I do encourage you to, to click the subscribe button and then to click the little bell icon, the notification there, because that means that you then get told when we've uploaded a new video, you'll be notified. Uh, and we do, during this lockdown, it's our aim to try and upload two videos a week, one on a Wednesday, which is a shorter reflection, and then on a Sunday, we have the online service. And our online services are obviously developing each week as we get more practice during this lockdown period. And it's great that we've got different people who are able to take part and take a role during this service. Matt, our curate, is going to be leading today's service and I'm going to be opening God's Word a little bit later on. But again, as in previous weeks, we have different people taking different parts of the service. I'm forever thankful to Tim and Liz who lead our worship each week and they'll be leading, again, sung worship later on in the service. I do encourage you to turn the volume up and to get stuck in and to sing along with Tim and Liz. It's brilliant when we worship together, and that's one of the things that I'm really missing during this lockdown period, just that opportunity to get together, to worship together. So why not turn that volume up and sing along and join in? Because there's something about sung worship, because it brings us closer to the heart of God. Let's make this worship a prayer. It's not just words. Let's not feel self-conscious. Let's not feel um, embarrassed. But actually, we're drawing closer to God as we come to him in worship. So I do encourage you to get involved. I encourage you to just use this time and use this space as a way of drawing closer to God. So before I hand over to Matt, let's just pause Let's just be still and just for a moment, let's just have a moment of quiet where we encourage God to draw near to us. Lord, in the Bible we read it says, be still and know that I am God. Lord, in our lives, it's often very busy and often we run around at 100 miles an hour and we fail to be still. We fail to stop. But Lord, during this period when everything is very different, again, Lord, that we might have more time, but often, Lord, we fail to be still and to be in your presence. So for this next half an hour, Lord, help us just to focus on you, to put aside all those things that we've got going on in our lives, the things that we're thinking about, the things that we're concerned about, the things that we've got planned for the rest of this day. Lord, help us to put those things on hold and help us to come to you, to bring those things to you. And help us to be still and to know that you are God. And these things we ask in your name. Amen. So I'm going to hand over to Matt, who's going to lead the rest of our service for us this morning. Matt, over to you. Good morning. Welcome to St Anne's online Sunday service. It's great to have you with us this morning. Now, as this is the first Sunday in May, we'd normally get everyone who has a birthday in May up to the front and gently embarrass them by singing them happy birthday. Unfortunately, I'm not yet aware of anyone who has a birthday. So the good news, therefore, is that you don't have to listen to me trying to sing happy birthday. The bad news is that I'm going to have to eat all of these chocolates all by myself. But seriously, if it is your birthday this month, I hope you're able to have a very happy birthday wherever you are. 
and do let us know and we might even be able to sing or cheer happy birthday to you over Facebook. Now even though we're in lockdown there are some things that are still going on here at St Anne's. On Wednesday each Wednesday morning we're having a reflection which is posted online from about eight o'clock which you can watch whenever you want. On Thursday our toddler group St Anne's Stars continue to meet at 10.30 via Facebook and if you'd like to be added to the group for that uh, please get in touch. On Saturday we've got our pub quiz on Zoom which begins at 8pm and I think the Millingtons are continuing to reign supreme as the champions. And then on Sunday of course we've got this service each week which begins at 10.30am. Now after this service we're going to be having a virtual tea and coffee time on Zoom so please listen out for the details for that and if you don't yet know them do get in touch with me or Ian or Paul. Now later in our service Ian's going to be opening God's word for us as we continue to work our way through the letter to the Colossians but before that let's open in prayer and let's pause. Heavenly Father we thank you that you know everything, that you know our hearts, that you know our desires, that nothing is hidden from you. So we pray that you would bless us as we meet, that we would love you more as a result and that we would want to honour your name more as well. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've made it to May. Sadly, the weather has got a little bit colder outside. Um, and it's hard to believe, isn't it, that we've had six weeks of lockdown already. But even though it may feel a bit like some of it has flown through, the novelty has completely worn off and there's still no end in sight. I guess most of us are probably feeling pretty frustrated. Most of us are getting irritable, I know I am. And it's easy to take that out on others, isn't it? Maybe our husband or wife, our children, or others that we're in contact with. And it's not surprising if we've had more arguments than usual. And it's not surprising if we've lost our temper and haven't yet wanted to apologise. Now to speak into this situation, I wanted to begin our service with a psalm. It's Psalm 51, and I think it speaks to all of us, whether we're struggling with others, whether we're struggling with something else. It speaks to all of us in this situation. So I'm going to read um, the first few verses. David writes, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. My sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right when you judge. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. You see, Psalm 51 tells us that the problem isn't just that we're struggling with others. It's that we're struggling with God as well. Each of us need God's mercy. Each of us need to be washed clean, a deep clean. Each of us needs surgery. We need a heart transplant. And each of us needs God's spirit to make us willing. Well, the words of a confession are going to appear on the screen. And please join with me as we ask God to forgive us. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life 
to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us all. Wash away all our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a pure heart and grant us your Holy Spirit to sustain us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's because of Jesus that we can be forgiven. And it's because of Jesus we can have new life. So let's sing our praises to the Lord Jesus as Tim and Liz lead us in today's song, My Jesus, My Saviour.
Reading from Colossians, chapter 2, verses 6 to 15. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the workings of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today I'm carrying on our new sermon series, which uh, we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks, which is Paul's letter to the Colossians. Uh, Gary spoke to us last week and Matt the week before, and they looked at chapter one. Today I'm going to be looking at chapter two, and it's Colossians chapter two, verses six to 15 that Rob has just read for us. Uh, It's a tremendously deep passage and there is so much for us to take from it. And if I was to do it any real justice, we'd probably be here till next Sunday. Uh, But you'd be pleased to know, as obviously these online services trying to keep them short, uh, I'm keeping my sermon short as well. So I'm only going to be talking for a couple of minutes. And to help me with that, I'm not going to be looking at all those verses. I'm actually just going to be looking at verses six and seven. And so here they are for us. So it reads, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. These are amazing verses, and in just these two verses alone, Paul sets out some massively important Christian principles for us. To live to grow and to be thankful, to live, grow and thankful. And they're the three things that I'm going to talk about in these next few moments together. First of all, to live. Paul says, as you received, so live. And it's this summons to live out the Christian life in a way that is worthy to God. And Paul is here about receiving. He's talking about, he's teaching about receiving Christ. And he's saying that this is only really the start of the Christian journey. But what does he mean when he talks about receiving Christ or you've received Christ? It's more than just simply inviting Jesus into your life to be your friend and to be your saviour. It's much more than that. What did those early believers receive from Paul's ministry? They received, first and foremost, an account of the gospel truths that he himself received uh, from the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, Paul writes these amazing words. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. And it's this oral tradition that, uh, that was carefully treasured and guarded And it was to become the written tradition that was obviously to make up uh, the New Testament as we have it today. And this is what these early Christians received. It was an account of Christ's death for their sins and the fact of his rising from the tomb on the third day. Amazing truths that they received from Paul. So yet receiving Christ into your life, obviously it's so, so very important But actually, we need to acknowledge who it is 
that we are inviting into our lives and what he's done in history as well as what he's done for us. Possibly one reason why some people who make a quick decision to become Christians, a quick decision to, to ask Jesus into your life, one of the reasons why they might fall away uh, early on in that journey is because they've not received his story, so to speak. They've not discovered who Jesus truly is and what he's done. In other words, they've not actually learned about Jesus. And I think one of the most important things that we must do when we are trying to encourage people to open their lives to Jesus is to make sure they know exactly who they are inviting into their lives. Yes, Jesus can be our saviour, but he can only be our saviour once we've acknowledged him as Lord. I'm reminded of that amazing passage uh, when Jesus, after he's risen, he appears to his disciples in the upper room. Uh, Thomas didn't see him initially. Thomas wasn't there. And he gets the, the name of Doubting Thomas because he says, unless I see him and I touch the nail marks and the, and the wounds in his side, I won't believe. And then uh, again, a second time, Jesus appears. And this time Thomas is there. And he invites Thomas to come and touch those wounds. But what does Thomas say? My Lord and my God. He acknowledges Jesus as Lord. First and foremost, we must acknowledge Jesus as Lord for him to become our saviour. That's what it is to live a Christian life, to acknowledge Jesus as Lord of all. True conversion must imply a recognition of Christ as Lord of all, of his right to be my saviour, of his right to rule in my life and therefore of his right to shape my life and the way that I'm going to live it as I try to follow him. The supreme challenge for every Christian is to make Christ Lord of everything and of every area of their life. In some areas of our lives, we might think that that's quite easy, but we all have other areas in our lives. Maybe those areas that actually we want to keep hidden from other people. Maybe there's areas of our lives that we're embarrassed about and we don't want to acknowledge those. But actually we must acknowledge them before Christ who is Lord of all if we're going to truly live for him. The second area of these two verses is actually about being rooted to grow. Paul says, as you are rooted to be built up. In other words, you've got to grow. Grow in him. And it's this summons to grow in the faith, to grow in Christ. Building young Christians up in their faith, it was a major concern for Paul. In a lot of his pastoral letters, he's, he's concerned about encouraging people to grow in the faith. And it should be the same for us today as Christians. We should be concerned about encouraging one another to grow up in our faith. And this is why, as a church, we've put in place a second course that follows on from our What If course. I know many of you have done our What If course and you found it to be really useful and helpful in becoming Christians and in those early stages on your journey of faith. But it's what we do from there. It's how we grow from there. And so we've put in a new course, a second course that follows on, which is our What Next course, our follow-on course. It should have started last week, but obviously due to the circumstances, uh, we can't do that. But we will be starting that as soon as we're able. And I do encourage those who've done the What If course and they're looking for what might follow to pick up the What Next course as a way of growing in our faith. See, once a person is rooted in Christ, they then need to be built up in him. The, the conversion or asking Jesus into our life, that's only the beginning of this journey. I know many of you are keen gardeners and we know that we might plant a seed under the ground, but that seed is packed with everything it needs in order to grow and burst forth and to grow into the plant that it will become. It's a little bit like that for us as Christians. When we invite Jesus into our life, he comes and he equips us with the gifts and the skills that we need to grow in him. But actually, we have to grow. We have to grow and we have to give ourselves all those things that are going to equip us and help us to grow. 
reading our Bible, praying, spending time with God. In other words, watering the seed, giving it the nutrients that's going to help us grow into full, mature Christians. But notice this, just as the rooting is in Christ, so is the growing and so is the building. You know, you can only grow in the soil in which you are planted. Don't allow people to pull you away from the solid foundation that is Jesus Christ. And that's why twice in this full passage, if you were to read the full passage, twice Paul warns these young Christians not to be deceived by human or worldly corruption. What about you and me? Are we too easily distracted by the things that this world might want to entice us with? The things that this world might drag us away from? It's very easy, isn't it, to be taken away from the Christian path by the lures of this world. But if we allow that to happen, believe you me, that will hinder our growth as a Christian. And this is another real challenge that we must get to know the Lord better if we're going to grow with him. And we can only do that by spending time with him, by focusing on him, and actually by being intentional about journeying with him. It's about taking those extra steps each day, some small and some big steps, because it's only when we do that that we actually really learn to trust God. I haven't got time, but I could share with you about some of the amazing ways in which God has provided for us as a family on our journey of faith. As we've stepped out and as we've made sacrifices for him, the number of times that God has come alongside and has opened doors and has provided is truly amazing. We've got to step out in faith if we're going to grow. And the third part of this, uh, this verse is actually about being thankful. Paul talks about being filled with thanksgiving, being established in thanks. It's a real challenge, this verse, for us. Uh, we all need to improve our Christian understanding. Um, if we want to be mature Christians, Paul says that we must be established in the faith and truth. Paul is a wonderful Christian teacher and he emphasises time and time again the importance of this Christian teaching. We all need the full truth. Without it, there can't be fulfilled Christian lives and there can't even be a stable Christian church. It has to be the full story and the full truth. Yes, Obviously and rightly, we preach Christ crucified. And this can and does bring people to faith. But it's not the full story. If we only preach Christ crucified, then we're actually missing out so much of the story. We need to preach the Old Testament, God's creation, mankind's turning away from God. We need to preach about God becoming man in Jesus Christ. We need to preach about Jesus' teaching, about his healing ministry, God in the flesh on this earth. Yes, we need to preach about Christ crucified. We need to teach about why he had to die. But we also need to preach about his resurrection, about the ascension and about Pentecost. We need to teach and preach about the Holy Spirit, the works and the person of the Holy Spirit. And we need to preach about the end times. In other words, we've got to preach the full story in its in entirety. From this verse, it's clear to see that there is no room in the Christian life for complacency. But as we listen to Paul's call to grow in faith, he tells us to do it with thanksgiving. Once we are established in the truth, we should become ever more thankful for all that the Lord has done for us and continues to do for us. Do you know what? We need to see more, more thankful people. More people who appreciate all that God is doing and all that God has done in their lives. I wonder when did you last give thanks to God? 
Just think for a moment of all the things that we can give thanks to God for, for the blessing of this day. When we consider all that Jesus has done for us and all that he will continue to do for us, to be bursting with thankfulness is a true witness of the Spirit of God within us. Can I encourage you this morning, today, maybe you might not be feeling thankful because of the situations that we're surrounded by, but why not stop for one minute and just write down some of the things that we can begin to give thanks for. And it might start simply, just because we can have a cup of tea, just because we can have breakfast. And once we start with those simple things, we'll begin to build a picture of actually all the amazing things that we can give thanks to God for. So as I finish today, just three important lessons for us to take on board today, to live, to grow, and to be thankful. Let's pray together. Father, as we take this passage with us into the week that lies ahead, Lord, help us just to remember, if nothing else, those three words, to live for you, to grow in you, and to be thankful for all that you are doing in our lives. And in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we may take comfort knowing you are still in control and that you stay the same and that your love for us never changes. Thank you for sending your Son to us so that we may have eternal life and a relationship with you. Today as we pray, we would ask you to join in with the response of Lord graciously hear us after the words, Lord, hear us. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and stronghold, who is steadfast and an anchor in these difficult days. We pray for the health and well-being of our nation, that all who are fearful and anxious may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For the isolated and housebound, that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. We give thanks for the acts of kindness and caring that we are being shown and the contact that people are making with each other and new friendships that are being forged. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For our homes and families, our schools and young people and all in any kind of need or distress. We ask you to be with us in our homes and give us patience with each other as we spend so much time together. Please be with parents as they homeschool their young children and young people. Help and protect them as they do this important task. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our local community, that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and friendship where all are known and cared for. We give thanks for technology and those with the skill to support others, helping them to meet with family and friends in a virtual world. We are especially thankful for our church family get-togethers on Zoom. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For doctors and nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. We thank for... Thank you for all the key workers who are providing and caring for us during this difficult time. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. We pray especially for those who are ill and undergoing treatment at this time, and we ask that you come close to them and give them your peace. We remember today the family and friends of the late John Rawlinson and give his wife Vera as the family prepare for the funeral tomorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Lord God, you are always with us. You are with us in the day and in the night. You are with us when we're happy and when we're sad. You are with us when we're healthy and we are ill. You are with us when we're peaceful 
and when we're worried. Help us to remember that you love us and are with us in everything. We will now say the prayer that Jesus taught us. So we pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hello again, and thank you, Ian, for reminding us to focus on Jesus. Thanks also to Rob for reading and Ian and Rabina for leading us in prayer. And of course, thanks too for Tim and Liz for leading us in singing. It's great to have so many people involved in these services. I guess it'd be a bit dull, wouldn't it, if it was just Ian and me each week. Now, if you're able to, there's an after service tea and coffee chat uh, about to start on Zoom. And don't feel bad if you're a few minutes late to that. And if you're having problems connecting, do send me or Ian or Paul a message and we'll try and help you uh, get connected. But let's finish with those verses from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you are taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that it is being able to hear each other and see some of each other, even when we're not able to meet physically. We pray, Father, that you would increase our thoughts of Jesus, that you would fix our thoughts and our minds on your Son, the wonderful things that he has done and the way in which our entire faith rests on him. We pray, Father, that you would indeed transform our lives by him, that you would do that today, that you would do that this week, that you would do that always. And finally, Father, we pray that you would look after us and that you would protect us while we cannot meet. And we pray that all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have a great week and I'll see you on Wednesday for our midweek reflection. God bless.
Dios.